Okay, so here we are. This time, variable specific heats. Last time, constant specific heats. Still an isentropic process. So we're saying that our overall entropy change is zero. That does not mean that this guy's entropy change is zero. That is just my like absolute entropy from going from absolute zero up to a particular temperature. That's not zero. But S2 minus S1, it is. And so what I can do in this case is that I can then start to solve for what my entropy would have been at the end in terms of my entropy at the beginning. Um, I should say absolute entropy at the beginning um, plus this little correction term right there. Now, that's fine. You can do that. You can use the tables and it will all work fine just as it is right now. However, if you're using the ninth edition of the textbook, I say ninth edition because the 10th edition introduced a new term, which I don't like. It's called S plus. And I think it's more confusing than it is helpful. But the ninth edition textbook has something called relative pressure and relative volume. And you can probably find a version of dependencies for those pretty easily. So what is relative pressure and relative specific volume? Well, all it is, is it's a way of solving this equation right here. And putting it into an easier term. So what we do is we say, okay, this term right here, the exponential of S2 divided by my specific gas constant is equal to over the exponential of S1 divided by my specific gas constant is equal to this ratio of pressures. And so what we do then is we say, well, you know what, U term, you're going to be something called relative pressure two. You'll be called relative pressure one. Why? Because I'm saying it's proportional to a ratio of pressures. So why not call it something based on pressure? And the great thing is I can also do the same thing for specific volume. So this is great. Okay, cool. What do you mean by this, Dr. Kidd? Well, these are things that are also tabulated in your appendices. You can look at a particular temperature, you can find it. And here's what it does. It's glorious. So if in a problem you're given a ratio of pressures, it says the pressure increases threefold. Well, you can look up your temperature, you can find your relative pressure, and then to find your final relative pressure, you just multiply it by the ratio of pressures. I have pressure relative one, I multiply it by you know three because I said it was three times greater pressure, and I can use that value to then get my final temperature. And I can do the same thing for specific volume. If it says that its volume gets halved, well, I know the ratio of volumes. So I use my temperature, I find my specific volume, I multiply that by my ratio of volumes, and I can then use that final specific volume to find my temperature. It's a really simple process when you're doing it. Just know that if you have pressures, use relative pressure. If you have volumes, use relative volumes. And it's a way for you to find your final temperature. That's the big thing here. If you know your initial temperature, you can find your final temperature using that ratio of pressures or using that ratio of specific volumes. And it does involve interpolation. Like It's just like when you were doing all the things with enthalpy in your tables. You do have to get used to that for this, but it's not terrible. So just follow it through, and you can also follow the next example about to do to give you a good idea of how to do it. So with that being said, let's jump into an example in this next video so you can see it being used. Thanks so much. I'll see you in just a moment.